this uh, morning service with uh, Gasho and Nembutsu. So please join me in Gasho and Nembutsu. Naman dobs, naman dobs, naman dobs, naman dobs, naman dobs, naman dobs. Thank you. And, and now I'm just going to sw switch my screen over so that you see the. And, oops. There. Now, does everybody see the large screen of, of the uh, Onaijin, the altar? I think you should be able to see that. Okay. And, and we'll begin with the uh, uh, chanting of the Junirai. And I'll bring that up on the screen right now. So we'll chant the Junirai together. And if you have it, please uh, pull out whatever material you have. If you don't have it, then uh, you can look on the screen. And we'll begin with the chanting of Juni Rai. Namandops, 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 Namandops. Oh, God, 
いみだそしょうむじょむがとやくにょすいがずでよろいしゅせぼむみょじおがちょらいみだそいそむせつむあくみょやくむにょにあぐのふしゅにししんきょいそおがちょらいみなそいそむりょほめきょむしょしゅあぐじしぎおじょふたいしもないおがちょらいみだそがせずひそんくどくじしゅぜむへんよかいすいしょうにゃぐぜんがしょうにょうしゃえせしゅしょうじょうひいこなまなまなまなまなそう、so, uh, uh, so I wanted to、uh, talk to you this morning,、uh, first of all, about you know, some of the、uh, things that we have been doing to、uh, mitigate uh, with this、uh, COVID 19 situation.、Um, as some of you might know,、uh, here in BC, we've entered what we call the phase two of the recovery. And as such, the government has relaxed some of the、uh, rules, I guess, for、uh, public places to open up. And one of the areas that they've、uh, allowed now is that we are actually allowed to have、uh, religious gatherings,、um, but we, can't, we still ha- cannot have more than 50 people at any one time. Um, at our temple, what we are doing is uh, we are uh, limiting it to 30 people. 
uh, to, in order for us to be able to maintain that physical distancing, as well as we have, so I have uh, some of you I showed at the beginning of the surface, we uh, put up, uh, put out stickers on the floor that says six feet of, please stay six feet apart. Uh, it's funny, I bought this from a, a Vancouver company. They didn't have any signs that said two meters apart. It's, they only had six feet apart. I guess they have more uh, American clientele than uh, uh, Canadian clientele. But uh, so anyways, we have these stickers on the floor. We have hand sanit sanitizers by the door. Um, we're asking people if, uh, if they come to uh, participate in service here that they do wear a mask. Uh, I'm not wearing a mask because there's only three of us here today, so I think we're, we're okay uh, that, what, that way. But, um, and we're not serving any refreshments after the service. And uh, we're also uh, going to be asking people if they want to have conversations after the service to step outside and do it outside as opposed to in the lobby where it can get congested. Anyways, to do all these different uh, uh, mitigative uh, steps, you know, as I was making up the list of things that we have to do, I started to get a little bit uh, annoyed or perhaps uh, dissatisfied, think, and I was getting a little worried, thinking, you know, we're, we're doing all these things uh, to make it difficult, actually, for people to come and, 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 and visit our temple or, or worship together. You know, one of the, the nicest things about actually coming together as a Sangha is the socializing that we're, we do with one another. And I was thinking to myself, oh, this is not going to be that good. We have to keep apart. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're basically saying you're coming here strictly just for the, the service and then right after service, go home. And, and so, I, you know, I thought, oh, this doesn't sound too friendly. Um, and as I was thinking of that, suddenly uh, uh, an image came to my mind. Uh, and I don't know why it came to my mind. But there's actually a famous uh, statue of Amida in, in Kyoto called Mikaigi, uh, Mikaigi no Amida. Now, as you can see, our statue here in our temple is the standing statue of Amida. Oh, by the way, I'm going to go off tangent a little bit here just to give you a little bit of uh, Buddhism 101. Uh, when you see the statues of the Buddha, there are actually three different uh, forms of statues. You might have seen a statue or image of the Buddha lying down. That's called the Buddha in recline. If you see that statue, that's actually limited to only one occasion, when the historical Buddha passed away or entered Parinirvana. So if you ever see a statue of a Buddha lying down, you, you, you can say, well, no, it's not Buddha being lazy or going to sleep, but in fact, this was when the Buddha passed away, the historical Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha. So that's the one, one statue or image, is the Buddha in recline. Then you'll, you'll see many statues of a Buddha sitting down, usually in the lotus uh, position. So when you see a statue like that, that's the Buddha in contemplation, okay? And that represents wisdom, contemplating, thinking, and if you see a statue of the Buddha standing, like our Amida Buddha, uh, the Buddha standing is a representation, a more dynamic representation of the Buddha. So this is a Buddha uh, expressing compassion. So when somebody is really worried about somebody, you can't sit still, you, move, you have to stand up. So the standing image of Amida is representing compassion. Okay. Now also with Amida Buddha, you'll notice that his hands, you have the two uh, circles, right, uh, right hand and the left hand. And there have been, uh, there was one minister in the States that uh, jokingly said, jokingly, remember, said that, uh, that what this represents is that the left hand is saying, make sure you donate or you're going to get smacked by me. Okay, but that's a joke, obviously. Uh, this also represents wisdom and compassion. The right hand is perfect wisdom, and the left hand is perfect compassion. 
Uh, per, the circle represents the perfect aspect. Circle has no beginning nor end. So perfect wisdom and perfect compassion. Now, if you see a sitting statue of the Buddha, and if you see, so if I take my right hand from the standing position, keeping that same circle and bring it down and join the left hand, you'll find, you'll, you might see some statues of Amida Buddha with the two hands together like this on the, the lap sitting down. So if you see a sitting Buddha with its hands like this, you can say right away, oh, that's a sitting image of Amida Buddha. Okay? Um, and a good example of that is in uh, Kamakura in Japan. They have one of the large uh, Daibutsu, uh, large Buddhas, and his hands are in this position. So you know that that's actually a sitting uh, image of uh, Amida Buddha. So that's, that's just uh, Buddhism 101. But, um, so this statue, the standing statue of Amida Buddha. Well, in Kyoto, uh, there's a temple called Zen Ninji, Zen Ninji Temple. And there, there's their main hall, they call it the Eikando. And there they have a very unique standing statue of Amida Buddha. Instead of looking out forward like this, um, the, the image, the statue actually has, is looking over its left shoulder, looking back. And I'm actually going to share that on the screen here so you can see what that looks like. So uh, you could probably see this on your screen now. This is actually the uh, uh, image of Amida at Eikando. Um, very unique, not like our, our regular Amida Buddha. Uh, can you all see this image on your screen? Yes? Okay, good. So the story behind this, so um, this statue originally, apparently, according to legend, the statue was not originally like this. It was like the regular Amida facing forward. Okay. And there was a, a very uh, famous monk by the name of Yokan who lived uh, in the late 1100s, 1100s to early 1200s. And Yokan was, uh, he was actually the head of the uh, Todaiji Temple, which is the temple in Nara that has the, the large uh, sitting Buddha. Uh, and he was the head of that um, temple for a number of years. And when he was the head of the temple, this statue uh, facing with the faith, uh, head facing forward was actually in the storage of this uh, Todaiji. And when Yokan saw it in the storage, he was drawn by this statue and he thought, what a shame, what a waste it is for it to be in the storage of, of this temple. And when he said that to the emperor, the emperor made him the, the primary custodian of this temple. So when uh, Yokan uh, came, he retired from being the head of the Todaiji temple and he made his way to Kyoto. And as he was going to Kyoto, he actually took the statue with him. And one of the legends said that he had it strapped to his back and the monks from Todaiji uh, chased after him to, to retrieve this statue from him, but they said it was uh, attached to his back so that they couldn't untie it from him. For, I don't understand. Literally, it was attached to his back, they said. So they gave up, and he was able to take it to Kyoto. So he took it to Kyoto, and he, and he put it in this temple called Zeninji. And um, during one of the, when he was about 50 years old, it was said that he was doing one of his daily practices. So in our practices, we have different types, different forms of practice. And one of the practices uh, is, is called Jogyo Zammai. And that means to circumambulate, you walk around the statue of Amida, constantly walking while reciting the name of the Buddha, Namo Amida Butsu or Nembutsu. And it was said that Yokan was doing this practice when uh, suddenly the statue came alive, came down from the pedestal and started walking in front of him. And it, it said that Yokan was startled by this and uh, he uh, 
stop. And when he stopped, it said that the statue then looked over its shoulder and said, Yokan, you're slowing down. Keep up. Come on. Keep up. So this image is of this statue. And then it said, according to legend, ever since then, the statue in, in uh, Eikando has its hat, head pointing over its uh, shoulder. So for some reason, this image came into my mind when I was worrying about the temple. And I guess it, it, it came to my mind that uh, I, I guess the Buddha, what the Buddha is trying to tell me is that, you know, I can worry all that I want to about how many people are attending the temple or what's going to happen in the future, but it's really not going to change anything. I, I can't magically will a coronavirus to disappear. This is the reality. But what I can do is maybe change my mindset and begin to think about how fortunate it is that we're able to, in this format, Zoom format, still connect with so many people. In fact, connect with even more people than we have in the past. And we can also reflect on the fact that when we do open the temple, even if a few people come, that's few more than we've had in the past number of weeks. So there are many things that we could be grateful for. You know, in this modern times that we're in, you know, not only the coronavirus, but what's going on in the States now uh, with the, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, Floyd? Uh, George Floyd. Yeah, Floyd is last name, but the, the gentleman in the States and, and all the aftermath of the rioting and whatnot, it's really not, um, our, our world right now is not in a good place. But in such a world, sometimes, as the Buddha is saying, you know, we have to just uh, focus, refocus ourselves and follow the teachings and just recite the Nembutsu. Sometimes it, we have to go beyond asking why, why do we do this, why do we do this, and actually accept the Dharma. And when I began thinking about that, I realized, you know, for me to be able to think of this uh, Buddha with his head turned to the side, it's because there was a long history of the Dharma passed on from generation to generation. And through all those interconnected interconnections, the Dharma has arrived here with all of us. And so when we begin to think about that, um, every week uh, we've been holding a special lecture, or I've been joining a lecture uh, for ministers uh, by one of the head uh, authorities of Jolo Shishu in, in uh, Kyoto. And in the last lecture, he was saying, you know, some of us might think the the Nembutsu teaching is 800 years old. That's how old the founder of Jodo Shinshu is. But he said, in fact, when you think about it, the Nembutsu teaching goes much further back because there were great monks in Japan, China, India that all espoused this teaching. And it goes right back to the historical Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha. So for 2,500 years, this uh, teaching has existed. And the, literally millions and millions of people have had this wish, this desire, that we all awaken together to the oneness of the Dharma. And that is here with us today. That has been brought to each of us today. So your presence here today is part of the millions that come together. And it is our common desire to share, to experience the oneness of life. And so through the multitude of uh, interactions, the interconnectedness, uh, the goen, as we say in Japanese, uh, we have been brought together. And as an expression of, of gratitude, we place our hands together. So if you're ever feeling down about it, uh, about what's going on right now. Think of this Buddha 
Mikhaili no Amida, the Buddha looking over his shoulder saying, hey, don't lose focus, listen to the Dharma and put our hands together and recite the Nembutsu. So at this time, I'd like to ask you to join me as we recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. And I think since uh, Genevieve is here, we'll have her play the uh, Ondok-san, and we'll close the service with Ondok-san. And I will try to get that up on my screen for for those who do not have the, the verses. Uh, just be patient with me for a couple seconds here. Okay. Just give me two seconds, then we. Well, you're going to be. <laughs> you have to play it on the fly. Oh, what happened? Okay. Okay, Genevieve. Okay. Uh. Everybody, oh, how do I unmute everybody? Oops, what happened? Uh, I 